Philip, thanks for uh, spending a few more minutes with us uh, after having such a fantastic conversation this morning. Uh, we were inspired by several things. First of all, of course, this whole uh, institution with its history, with its special uh, endeavor. Um, and one element that uh, uh, I would like you to maybe comment on it was this idea how to come from an uh, ecosystem to an ecosystem for educational innovation and learning uh, on a global scale. How do you think this is possible to uh, achieve to have uh, collaboration with other stakeholders in other countries that kind of take this spirit forward? Um, so for the people who weren't here this morning, we talked about ego system and ecosystem. And ego system, I think, was more individual researchers or faculty or institutions doing things for themselves, whereas ecosystem, the idea was more people collaborating with each other on similar shared interests uh, and, and the sum of the parts would become more than the individual. Um, I mean, one of the amazing things about academia is that you have the ability to remain in your little silo and you have the freedom to do this. So I think for us, the way we think about it is you, you can only inspire people to want to join. You can never force them to join. If you create structures where you're saying we're now creating a cluster of innovation uh, universities and these are the ones that are participating and they have to send two people, that, those things generally don't tend to work very well. But if you launch a, kind of a, a, big, a big idea, a big challenge, something that people are, something that's hard to do, that's important to do, and then you look for the people who want to participate and then you support them and that community grows then I think th that's how you build ecosystems. And y there will be some people who want to remain in the ecosystem and they will maybe do amazing work and that's fine. Um, and I think it's uh, not worth spending all of your energy trying to convince the people from the ecosystem to join the ecosystem, rather put the energy into fostering and nurturing and supporting the ecosystem. And very pragmatically, how do you think that it's possible to collaborate uh, if people would be interested to maybe try things, uh, have more interaction? Like between mm -hmm. MIT and Germany, for example? Yeah. Um, well, there are a lot of people here who are very passionate about new technologies that could support new types of learning. Um, if we find people in Germany who are interested in similar things, who have engineering capability, who build prototypes, who share our values. I think, I think that probably the most important thing is finding the people that share the same values. Um, then I could imagine, I mean, the Digital Credentials Project is a good example. We currently work with two German universities and they just were, they were doing interesting work in this area. They had expertise. Um, they were interested in, in collaborating on this and together we decided to, to start this project. So I think there are lots of opportunities. I know um, especially at MIT we are very international universities so we're looking outwards quite a lot um, and I know a lot of people here are interested in um, you know some of the flagship companies in Germany, some of the flagship universities are on the radar here so I, I think it would be an attractive um, possibility for people from here to collaborate. Maybe just in a nutshell, because I think it's a very interesting project that uh, you have been working on on this credential uh, future, let's say, uh, with a white paper coming up. Yeah, white um, paper, just going out to the uh, critical friends today, actually. Wow. So mm -hmm. in a nutshell, um, where do you see this um, leading to? What is the perspective on uh, credentialing on a global scale? I mean, big picture, we will all have a wallet on our phone that, where we store all of the credentials that we collect throughout our lives. And we are in full control over how we share them with employers, with other universities, who gets to verify them, who gets to see what part of your uh, history. Um, and then in the aggregate, there will be interesting analyses that we can do using that data. But none of that data would be individualized. Um, so basically, your your personal academic history is in your own, is controlled by you, owned by you, and you can turn those kinds of learning experiences into better jobs or more opportunities. Very interesting future, but um, just given that you are a German, what would you recommend our German uh, colleagues and uh, yeah, uh, stakeholders working in this uh, field, what to take with them for further elaboration in Germany? On digital innovation or? Yeah, in, in total. 
Well, I mean, you've heard me say this before, but in Germany, we have the extreme luxury that there is strong government support for higher education. And while um, there w is always a need for more funding, kind of the base funding is provided, and you have the opportunity to be much more risk-taking than you can be in an environment where you don't have the security. Um, I am fortunate to be at MIT where we do have uh, the means that we can take risks and try new things. But in a way, every German university has that opportunity. Right? There's enough money there to try and to push the boundaries and to experiment and not go bankrupt. Um, and so I would love to see the amazing engineering talent and creativity that German uh, universities have focused on making their own institutions better, coming up with new ideas, and becoming an example that the rest of the world looks at. Um, because I think there, there are a lot of uh, uh, good ideas that came from Germany in education, and it's time that the German universities become leaders in this space again. Thanks for sharing this vision with us. Uh, hopefully we're gonna work on it together furthermore. Thank you. Yep, thank you.